All right, you all. Well, welcome to Forex for Beginners. It is uh, 6 01, so we'll go on and get started. Um, we do this class just to complement your learning and um, help everyone um, just have a, a, a nice, warm place to get some information, to help you study, to ask questions. Here at Epic, we have um, a phenomenal back office. You know, if you're if you're on the newer side or you haven't been through at minimum the two week syllabus, that's definitely the first place to start. Coach Max has um, covered everything you know to really need you know to be able to get started effectively with that two week syllabus. And then there's um, so many other good sections in the back office. So in addition to the live classes and the study halls that have that more intimate um, feeling. And then we're a part of Coach Max and Ryan's Dynasty Exchange group. So uh, make sure that you check your email so that you can be plugged into the new telegrams for, for Dynasty Exchange and that you're a part of the Facebook group. There is an entire week's worth of live classes that um, DX sponsors. So I take part in as many of those as I can. And then we're here under Domo for Impact Over Profits and we provide additional classes as well. So, you know, just make sure you get plugged in, you know, somewhere where you feel comfortable and you can um, have someone to join you along this, this trading journey. So the format of the class, we do this on Tuesdays. This call will be recorded. Uh, so if you look in the chat, I will place a link to my YouTube. And by tomorrow, um, sometime between the morning and noon, I'll make sure that this upload is on the YouTube site and I'll post it in our ILP chats as well. So all the previous classes um, since we've been here at Epic have been recorded. And so the flow of the class, I'll go over something new or important for the first 15 minutes or so, then we'll dive into uh, Q&A, very informal. You can come off mute. If you have a question, you can type it in the chat, whatever makes you more comfortable. And with that, we'll just jump into it. We're gonna keep the class around 30, 40 minutes with such full schedules everywhere. Um, Asia session um, live with Epic starting at seven. We're gonna try to you know get you some knowledge and then give you your time back. So what we started doing last week was diving into trading view, but with the intention of how to get you ready to pull up the chart and do uh, beginner analysis on your own. So I think you know as traders, no matter where we are in our journey, we fall into some categories. And we want to make sure that, you know, if you've been here, you know, a number of weeks or months, you know, we want to make sure that everyone can pull up trading view, look at the one to two to three pairs that you call your own, the ones that you're following, and be, be able to do beginner analysis so that in time, when you're ready, you can call your own trades if that is your goal. So we want to take away anything that may make you feel afraid of trading view or intimidated. We're just going to dive in, keep it nice and simple, and hopefully start seeing um, more and more people post their own charts and analysis in our um, IOP groups. So I will share my trading view in one second. I think I'll just go here. Allow my screen to catch up. All right, so we are looking at trading view. Let me move this out of the way. Going to adjust this to make it a little more narrow. And just to cover the basics, here in the upper left corner, this is where you type in the pair that you want to view. We'll be looking at EU, short for Euro USD today, and then you choose a time frame. So it's as simple as that. Um, I do have um, a video on creating your free account in TradingView. Uh, I'm sure it's in the back office as well. So don't let that stop you. You can get a free account, no charge. 
And this is how you get started. You type in your, we call it asset, is a general term that involves Forex pairs, crypto pairs, indices, everything uh, can be lumped into one bigger term called an asset. So here is where you type in your asset. We're just going to keep it simple and look at Forex pairs. So here's where you would type in your Forex pair. EU is a nice um, beginner friendly pair. And then you choose your time frame. So if you want to, let's say it's Sunday night or Monday or the beginning of the week, whenever you want to start um, studying or an analyzing your pair, you go to Euro USD, and we're going to go to the one hour. The one hour is a nice general time frame. It's not as big as the four hour, the daily, the weekly, or the monthly. It's not as small as your five minute, 15 minute, or one minute. So it's a nice place to start. Now the back office will have, you know, full directions on how to do a full top down analysis. We're just going to concentrate on the one hour just so that um, we can get you nice and comfortable. So you may notice that my uh, candles are uh, different colors. If you right click and go to settings, you can customize your chart. So you're probably familiar with seeing uh, green for your uh, up candles. So here is where I've made mine um, this sort of teal blue for the body and the wick. And then you're probably used to seeing red for the uh, bearish or down candles. And here I've chosen purple for mine. So that gives you um, a quick way to customize your chart based on how you want it to look. Feel free to keep the traditional red and green colors. All right, so what's one of the first things that we're gonna do to take a look at uh, Euro USD? Let's draw some support and resistance zones. So don't let that term um, scare you. We've gone over this before. And one way that's kind of simple is to come down to the second icon here on the left trend line tools. And when you so click on that arrow, come down to horizontal line. Now I am going to place this horizontal line on places on the chart where the tops of my candles seem to be um, stopping at, as well as where the bottom of some of these candles seem to be resting on. So I'm going to mark this area. I'm going to right click it, go to settings, and we're going to mark our support and resistance maybe with a uh, purple line today. And here we will choose solid line. Now that's a little thick. If I wanted to make it thicker, I could click here on the purple and select any of these lines for my zones. I think I like that second option. So that's how you can customize your line. You simply click on it, right click and go to settings. You can choose any color that you like. You can choose whether it's um, a straight line, dashed or dotted. And then when you click on that purple, you can uh, choose how light or dark the shade will be as well as how thin or thick the line is. Okay, so now because I'm on my laptop, I'm just going to control C and control V to get another line available. And I think I'm gonna mark maybe this area here. Let me mark a few and then I'll explain why I chose these areas. Now, no two people will mark up a chart exactly alike. So uh, you don't have to feel like, you know, there's a perfect uh, way to do it. I think I'll mark it there. Let's get a few more at the bottom. Maybe there, and then one more, maybe here. So I'm going to um, make sure you go back to this cross here. Um, so that trading view can, so that you can pick and choose. Now, I'm, I like to use this arrow tool, tool to help me point out certain things. So looking at this line, you can see that price, the wick of this candle touched um, this zone here. 
If you make a mistake, here's the left arrow to undo. So if I want to choose another arrow, you can see that the bottom of these candles also touch this line here. So that's why I marked this zone. You can see this wick here is pretty close to it. Now in terms of this zone here, you can see that the bottoms of these candles are pretty much resting on the line here. You can also see that the bottoms of the candles are touching the zone we've selected here. So these are some of the reasons why I selected the lines that I did. If we come to this zone here, you can see the bottoms of these candles are resting on this line as well. As over here, you can see the bottoms of these candles are resting on this zone here. So we just did that um, just a few and we're on the one hour time frame. So this is a great place to start. Now, if you go to the higher time frames, you can mark additional zones. And if you drop down to your lower time frames, by lower, we mean uh, the one minute, three minute, five minute, 15. Those are all popular, smaller or lower time frames. You can mark additional zones there. All right. So step one is to open up your trading view, type in your Euro USD, maybe start at the one hour time frame. So now we've drawn our zones. We're going to keep it simple. The only indicator that we're going to look at today is the 50 EMA, which is this um, uh, moving average here in turquoise. And I've added the 200 EMA. So we're going to talk about that one as well. So how do you get this on your chart? Especially if you have a free account. With a free account, I believe you get um, a couple of indicators um, so if you use the 4XLG EMA setup, it comes with a number of different moving averages that you have the option to choose. So I really like this one. So come up to the FX. Notice it says indicators and strategies. You would type in 4XLG and we're gonna use the EMA setup. So what you wanna do is just click right here on the title. Don't click over here for the author of it. That's gonna bring up another window. So just click here on the uh, part that's highlighted in blue and TradingView will add it to your chart. And here you have the eyeball, you can hide it. Here you have your settings. So all of these are available moving averages that you can show. We're only going to show two. So we're going to do the 50 EMA and the 200. So here's my style. And here's where I like to use this nice blue teal color for my uh, moving average. You can choose the thickness, just like we did before with the horizontal line, your color and your thickness. And then for my 200, I like to use a nice um, gold and yellow. Okay, and so if I go to input, you can see here the 50 is selected and the 200. So if I count down one, two, three, I want the fourth and the fifth one because I don't want to use any of the other EMAs. We wanna keep it nice and simple. So if I come to style, notice I only have the fourth and fifth one checked. So if I wanted to only show my 50 EMA, then I could uncheck the 200, but we're gonna talk about um, both of them today. All right, so we've marked up our support and resistance. We have two EMAs on our chart and that's as complicated as it's gonna get. We're not gonna add anything else um, to the chart. We're gonna look at this one hour time frame. Now we know the golden rule, right? Uh, when price is above the 50 EMA, so above this blue one, we are looking for buys. 
When price is below the 50 EMA, we are looking for sales. So that's what we talked about last week. And we reviewed that. Let me uh, get rid of these arrows so we can keep it nice and clean. We talked about looking at the chart and taking notice when price um, crosses when the candles um, are completely on one side or the other of the 50. So let's say we started looking uh, here. If you know if we look to our left, price had been underneath. All of a sudden the candles cross over the 50 EMA. Now we are clearly in an uptrend. So taking a buy or sell, this is one of the most common um, strategies out there in Forex is simply using the 50 EMA. When price crosses above and uh, closes above my 50 EMA, then we can go for buys. And likewise, when price closes under the 50 EMA, an example of that is here. These candles are now closing underneath the 50 we can go for sales from this point. And what we also talked about last week was taking our buys and sales as close to our zones as possible. That's why we mark them here, because when we take price, when we take our buys and sales close to the zone, it allows for our stop loss to be just on the other side of the zone and to have a nice minimal risk. So we can go for more pips big rewards and small risk. We always wanna have a good uh, ratio. So adding on that for today, let me check the time, okay, is we've added the 200 uh, moving average. And what you can look for is when these EMAs cross. So let's look here. Here we have the 50 EMA crossing over the 200. So let me um, just add some text so you can know which one is which. So our 50 EMA, and I'll put it in the same color, is going to be in the turquoise color. And then our 200 EMA is going to be in our uh, gold and yellow color. So what do you think is gonna happen when the 50 crosses above the 200? Our candles are above the 50, we are going for buys. Likewise, what do you think is going to happen over here when the 50 crosses under the 200? it gives us another confirmation that we can look for sales. So let's write down some of these. When, when we say confirmation or confluences, I know they're big words, but those are reasons to take the trade. And so the more reasons or confirmations or confluences that we have, the better we feel about it. So one confluence is... So when price is above the 50 EMA, we want to buy, we want to look for buys. And a second confirmation for a buy is when the 50 EMA crosses above the 200 EMA. We also wanna look for buys. So already that's two two confirmations here. So looking at this area, the 50 cross over the 200. So that tells us, all right, let me look for buys. And then also our candles themselves are starting and ending, closing above the 50 EMA. That's another reason um, for a buy. Um, maybe next week we'll add on uh, trend lines, but you know we're not gonna get too crazy with it. Last week, we just did support and resistance or zones and we used our 50. This week, we're gonna add our 200 EMA just for an additional 
confirmation, confluence, reason to take the trade. And we're going to keep it as simple as that. Looking for where these intersect and making sure our candles are um, above the 50. So that's basically it. That's basically the strategy that you know, we want everyone to be comfortable with doing. Now, whatever strategy you use is totally up to you. There are so many good ones out there. This is sort of like, I'm, I want to gain confidence to be able to look at the charts on my own. So this is one that's kind of simple to follow that you may or may not want to use. I like it. It's, um, using the, the 50 EMA is, you know, definitely a confluence for me, no matter what strategy I'm using. All right. So are there any uh, questions so far? Um, feel free to come off mute or put it in the chat. Last week, we talked about uh, trading from zone to zone. So that gives you, uh, the zones give you a place to enter the trade and the next zone can be your, um, your take profit. So for example, if we, um, let's say we entered, let's move this arrow here. Let's say we had our entry here. So if our entry was here in blue, then we can easily shoot for um, a take profit here at this next zone. TP. Now, if we're um, back testing and, you know, we've learned from Coach Max, you know, how to do our back testing, let me just kind of go over uh, another way to show it. So let's take that away and show you another way to do it. We can use this horizontal line. We can show our entry here, and then I'm going to right click on it. We're gonna show our entry in blue. We're gonna use our dotted line, our dashed line, okay? And we can show our stop loss just on the other side, maybe below the lowest candle. We're gonna show our stop loss in the color red. And then our TP, we're going to show in green, and I'm going to put it just above the line just so that you'll still be able to see it because we have a zone there. So I'm going to show green. Okay. So if you wanted to, uh, when you're marking, marking up your charts, if you wanted to show it that way, that's another way you can do it. So just to add some text there, the blue is our entry. The red would be where our stop loss is. And then the green would be our take profit. So now you have a nice, simple way to show what you're doing on the charts. Any questions about how we take a trade um, using the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA? This works for just about any pair. Yeah. If you're um, in the, the beginner phase, you want to probably avoid your cryptocurrencies and your um, crypto pairs are like BTC USD, XRP USD. Your indices, you, you want to avoid those, the US 30, the NAS, and you may even want to avoid the metals, your, your gold. So the foreign, the Forex pairs, your USD, AUD, USD, um, 
URL JPY. These are all some, uh, some nice um, beginner pairs to start with. So let me add that here. Beginner friendly pairs. Uh, Euro USD, Euro JPY, AUD USD, and AUD JPY. Those are all uh, great places to start. And what we want to encourage you to do is when you mark up your chart, post it um, in our ILP chats. And uh, I think it'll be great if we can all study some of the same pairs. We can start with uh, Euro USD since a lot of people trade it, keep it kind of simple and see, you know, what are we doing? We know right now, um, this is kind of interesting because here, if we look at the blue line, um, earlier today, we would have been looking for sales because price, the 50 had crossed the 200 EMA and then all of these candles are below the 50. But what are we noticing? Now price has broken above the 50. So um, I would love to see what it does at that 200 EMA. And after that, make a decision. I think I see a question in the chat. Yes, go over to stop loss. That's always such a, a good question, Camille. So, One way to determine your stop loss, let's say, let's use this arrow here. Let's say that I wanted to enter um, on a buy at this zone. Then if below the zone, then that's my cue that, you know, price may not be doing what I expect. So if I enter here, I want to look at the previous low. And so I noticed that price has wicked below this zone. Wicks in general tell you that price no longer wants to go there. So if I wanted to choose a place below stop loss, those wicks say that price can come back there, probably won't go beneath it. So I wouldn't want to choose my stop loss here. Let me try to zoom in because I could easily get stopped out if price wicks that area again. So I wanna come just below those wicks. So if price revisited, you know, my thinking, my assumption is that it's not gonna go past it. So um, times you don't have a, a previous candle that's close to you to look at. So you can just use, you know, a few pips on the other side of the zone. You know, stop loss is always, you know, kind of tricky because those with larger accounts, you kind of feel like you have a little bit, a little bit more cushion. You may be not as, you maybe not as concerned with the stop loss, but then those with smaller accounts, you want to make sure you live to trade another day. And so your stop loss is very important. Um, another reason why we mark our zones is that you know, taking a buy close to the zone is important because now your risk is the difference between the blue, where the blue line is and where your red line is. So the number of pips in between, that's your risk. And your reward, what you're going for is the green line. So that's a nice risk to reward. So you're risking, you know, what's in here between the blue and the red and these are all the pips you're going for. Now, what happens if you enter a trade here? Well, now you now have a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio, which is okay, but if you enter a trade somewhere here in the middle, price loves to go back to the zone. That's like price's comfort zone. So your stop loss still, even though you entered here, your stop loss to be safe still needs to be somewhere near this zone or you run the risk of being stopped out. So that's another reason why you wanna enter as close to the zone as possible so that your stop loss can be smaller. But just know that 
the close, the farther away from the zone you enter the trade, now your risk has to be bigger because your zone is like home base. Price always likes to go back there, you know? And so if we look at price here, look how it took off. Got close to RTP. Maybe you wanted to take profit, but if you wanted to hold it, price came back to the zone, back to the zone several times, and eventually it gets to RTP. So this is a trade that, you know, could make some a little nervous, depending on your trading style. If you kind of want to be in the trade for the shortest amount possible, when you entered, when price got this close to your TP, maybe you consider taking profit and being out of the trade. If you were certain and you wanted to stick it out, you, those extra few pips, you know, mean something to you, then you would have to wait it out. Remember, we're on the hour time frame. Each candle lasts one hour. So um, if you notice, the bottom of trading view will tell you the time frame. If I can move my window, then I can show you. So, you know, just by putting your line here, this candle was February 22nd at 15 o'clock, which is 15 military time for um, three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, can I move my Zoom screen? Yeah, I'm not able to see my bottom, but it looks like if we enter the trade here, that looks like February 23rd. I can't see the bottom. One second, let me see if I can move it. Hey, Tasha. Yes, can you see it, Mia? The, what, your times? Mm-hmm. Mm, nope. Nope, yeah. My, but um, I can look on my computer. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, I really mm -hmm. wanted to show the, the difference. Um, and my Zoom um, screen is spinning and not allowing me to move it. So like where my, um, if I put my, let's say we entered the trade um, after this pullback. So we entered it here. What time is that? Are you able to see it? Can you put a horizontal line and see if that pulls up a time? How about that? Oh, now I can see it. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I can just move my screen over. Yay, never mind. So let's say we entered the trade here, February 23rd at 10, um, this is probably 10 a.m. Let's do it here after that pullback, okay? So we entered the trade February 23rd at 8 a.m. Here, either one of these candles, these big um, engulfing candles, both of these wicked close to our TP. So that was two to three hours later. If we wanted to stay in the trade, we would not hit our TP to the next day at 3 a.m. So this is where you decide what trading style you're comfortable with. Some people, you know, the good news is once you have your stop loss set and your TP, you can safely walk away from the trade. And if you're okay, you know, holding that trade, then uh, if that's your trading style, then yeah, stay in and all the way to TP. If you're, if you're more of a scalper, you like to pip and dip, kind of get in and out of the market, maybe you're okay with um, taking a TP when price wick kind of close to your zone. Mia, did you have a question or a comment? Oh, I was just um, somebody in the chart in the chat wanted you to go over how your zones and your stop loss correlated. Again. How the zone? Okay, sure. How the zone and the stop loss? Yeah, I saw um, Camille's question earlier. So, if we're able to enter the trade close to the zone then you can put your stop loss on the other side of the zone. And in this case, if we were doing a buy here, we would look at the previous candles lows and I would put my stop loss just on the other side of those wicks. And let's do uh, one more example before we go. Um, okay. 
let's say that we wanted to take a sell because now the candles are starting to close underneath the 50 and here is our zone. So a price broke through. Remember our purple, that's our bearish candles that are moving down. Then price came back up. We called that a retest. It broke through, retested, broke through the zone, came back and retested the zone. So the next time we see some bearish movement, we can get in on that sell. And then we're going to do, so in this case, our entry would be um, somewhere here. Our TP is at this next zone. And so our take profit needs to be somewhere on the other side of this zone. So if I'm, you know, entering somewhere here, if I wanted to be safe, you know, I could go that high. If my account can't handle a stop loss that big, you know, maybe I have it tighter. It's really going to be up to you. But that's the advantage of trading, um, entering as close to the zone as possible, because the rule of thumb is put your stop loss on the other side of that zone. So Camille, hopefully that answered your question. Any other questions about um, using the 50 and the 200 and trading from one zone to the next? Awesome, awesome. A lot of times, um, because we do like for the candle to close before we enter a trade. So a lot of times what you can do, let's say I was interested in entering a cell in this area. I can drop down to a lower time frame. Now let's find it. There we go. There's that yellow box. So notice that price broke through. Okay. Notice that price broke through about here. Yeah, this was a this was a little tricky because price broke through, came up to retest. If we entered here, then, you know, if our stop loss was here, we would have gotten stopped out. That's okay, because we can make another decision maybe to enter here. I love using break and retest. Sometimes you don't always see um, the retest. In this case, we could have um, entered here, had our stop loss, you know, above the previous candle and price would have come down almost halfway, not really retested the whole zone, but then went straight to our TP. So sometimes um, if you wanna do break and retest, you can go down to a smaller time frame and see more candles. Okay, yeah, I think my, I think I lost my audio on my um, computer. So yeah, I'm dialed in from my phone. <laughs> Mia, what was the last part you heard? Uh, <laughs> pop quiz, pop quiz. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I'm glad I was paying attention to the chat. Okay, so you can't see my screen now. Yeah, I have lost. Um, Zoom is not responding to me. All right, well, I will work on this recording. Are there any other uh, questions before we go? Is anyone feeling more comfortable with being able to mark up support and resistance zones? And are you able to use the, be able to um, put the 50 EMA on your chart? Are there any questions about that? Because that's, that's really what it's about is, um, being able to pull up the chart on your own and just taking a few steps, nothing too complicated to be able to make a decision if you wanna buy or sell. And so, you know, each week we can talk about different confirmations and different confluences. But if you notice, we're gonna keep it really, really simple. Support and resistance, you know, maybe one or two EMAs and everything after that will just be extra confirmations and confluences. 
and this too will um, also help you to when um, Josh and, and Sean and when Dama, when they post their uh, trade alerts, their trade ideas, uh, hopefully you'll be able to relate to their chart a little bit more. All right, are there any other questions before we go? Does everybody feel like they could do their zones after watching this? You're welcome, Camille. Awesome. Thanks, Glenda. So does anyone um, follow EU? Is that um, one of anyone's pairs? Because if not, next week we can switch to another one, maybe UJ or AU. AU moves a little slow. Um, I follow oh, great, great, awesome. So um, what we wanna do is start, start to post, you know, our EU charts, you know, in the ILP chats and I, I just want to reiterate before we go that there's no perfect way to draw a chart. Everyone's markup will look slightly different in terms of where you do your zones. So, you know, we want to have a, you know, a really relaxed environment where you can feel like you can post your chart and um, we can offer, you know, feedback, but understand that, you know, we don't expect everyone's uh, charts to look the same. All right, well, with that, guys, I will work on the uh, recording. And, oh, okay, Glenda follows AJ. Yeah, we can definitely look take a look um, at AJ next week for sure. And hopefully we can get to the point where we're, um, you know, looking at the charts, you know, within the ILP chats and making decisions about, you know, if we're seeing buys and sells. And we're gonna keep it um, really basic, really simple. All right, everyone, well, I'll work on the recording and I'll talk to y'all in the chats. Good night.